virtue of authority entrusted to me, I constitute this congregation a lawful congregation of the University of Venda. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please take your seat. Univen Choir. Program Director, Dr. Takarani Zaga, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Postgraduate Studies, Professor Nosi Sifeza, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Teaching and Learning, Professor Eusebius Likalakala Mukhele, 
the University Registrar in Absentia, Dr. Joel Baloy, and the outgoing Registrar, Advocate Edward Ambani in Absentia, University Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Botwek Razia, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Management, Commerce and Law of the Investor Vendor, Professor Mudimoa Barua Kanyane, Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, Social Science and Education, Professor Wongani Vantwini, the Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Professor Chirizi Murauzi, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Agriculture, Professor Natasha Popita, Director of Student Affairs, Mr. Azidovi Mukedi, President of the SRC, Mr. John Daka, and the entire SRC leadership that is present, staff and students, parents and guardians, members of the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and more importantly, our new students for 2024. Good morning to you. Macheron. Abushe. Dumelang. Tobela. Kuyomore. Program Director, it is my greatest pleasure to stand here this morning on this occasion as we mark the official opening of the 2024 academic year. On behalf of the Investor Vendor Council, Senate and Management, I want to take this time to welcome you all, much more our first entering students to the Investor Vendor. Allow me also to welcome our staff and returning students who came back from the uh, summer holidays just in January so that we can begin to prepare for the 2024. And we are doing that because we want to ensure that our registration and admission process can able to run smooth as it is happening. So I need to thank you for that. I'm also pleased that at this gathering this morning, we'll also be celebrating our top best performing students, where we'll present them with their certificates, cash and other trophies for the achievement they've done in the year 2023. And this is a well-deserved award to recognize hard work and sacrifice for those recipients of those awards. Let me take this time to congratulate all the award recipients. But for those of you who won't be receiving this, I want to encourage you to work harder so that you can become a recipient of these come 2025 January when we do this official opening again. Program Director, I also want to congratulate our metric class for 2023. Your commitment, your hard work, self-discipline has been richly rewarded for you to able to obtain a bachelor pass that allows you to be admitted at the university of your choice. It is through your exceptional performance in metric that you are able to secure your admission at this university. You have been selected out of 96,000 applications which were competing for spaces of about 3,600 here at the investor vendor. So you can understand that, you know, when we say The competition is very rife, not only here, but also elsewhere in other public universities. We can only admit about 3,006, and out of the 96,000 applications that we have received. I wish to commend each of you 
for choosing the investor vendor as your preferred institution of higher learning in feathering your educational aspirations. You have made a good choice to come to this university. Just a brief background to, about this university so that you can know exactly who we are. We were founded about four decades ago, and in 2022, we celebrated our 40th anniversary. And we consider ourselves to be an emerging university. In our offerings, in terms of our teaching and learning, we offer various undergraduate and postgraduate academic programs in four faculties, namely the Faculty of Health Sciences, the Faculty of Humanities, Social Science and Education, the Faculty of Management, Commerce and Law, and lastly, the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Agriculture. We are a well-managed institution of higher learning. And for the past year, five years, the University of Venda has continued to receive what we call an unqualified audit opinion or audit reports by the Auditor General of South Africa. That tells you that you know, we are able to at least to account for the funding and the monies that we are given at our disposal to run this university. And I want to thank the team in finance for ensuring that we're able to reach those milestones. Our university continues to be in an upward tra trajectory as far as our research output is concerned. And in the past five years, we have seen a huge increase in terms of our staff who obtain a higher degree in the form of a PhD. So about 44% of our teaching staff has a PhD, or a, what you call a doctoral qualification. And this is much above the national average of 37% in the higher education sector. It's something that we are quite pleased about. We are also happy that you know, our student throughput and output compares favorably with those other universities in the county. In the year 2022, your university was ranked in the top 15 of South African universities by Times Higher Education World Ranking. And this again attests to the good work that men and women of this university are doing to ensure that this university get to be counted amongst the best university in the country. The number of our National Research Foundation rated researchers continues to grow. And this cohort is the cohort that drives our research output. And we want to thank the DVC for research and postgraduate studies for ensuring that in our research output is beginning to show a huge improvement from where it was. My message to the first time entering students, those of you who have just uh, registered this year. I want to say to you, our first year students, that your academic journey has just begun. The progress of completing your studies and courses that you have chosen will largely depend on how you conduct yourselves. Now it's up to you. And what we can say to you, we know that you know, even the former students in the prior years, they've really shined, and we expect that you'll do the same for this 2024 class. And always remember that success in life does not come easy. Because for you to succeed, your desire to win should be greater than your fear of failure. In other words, you must always thinking of winning and succeeding. I'm saying that because over the past 12 years, the story of your lives were mostly directed and dictated 
by your parents, your guardians, and the teachers. You have now become the sole author of the next chapters of your story. You can determine the direction and the pace at which your story should go. So it's upon you. Make a vow to yourself that you're going to graduate in the minimum time that is allowed for your respective degree. Most of you seated here, you have passed your metric with very good grades. And we expect you to do very, very well in your studies. And for those of you who are being supported by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and other private funders, take advantage of the support that has been provided to you and maximize this benefit. And as you have become part of this special community of the investor vendor, I wish to draw to you your attention to our core values and guiding principles that we subscribe to, which we expect you as a, now a university student at this uh, university, that you also subscribe to these values. Firstly, we believe in quality and excellence. In other words, we're not gonna debate quality and excellence. Excellence and quality has to stay excellent in that way. We also believe in accountability. That is, people as staff, as students, we have to be accountable. You have to be accountable to your lecturers, to your teachers. You have to be accountable to your parents, to anybody that is of your authority to you. So we have to be accountable to one another for us to do well. We also believe in transparency, that there is nothing that is hidden. We are a public university. And all of you here, you had to know how this university is run. And whatever happens in your spaces, we also have to know, because we believe in transparency. We also believe in integrity, that you must stand by what you are known for. Because it's not only that you know we want you to acquire your degree or your diploma or your certificate. We also want you to have you to have integrity in your standing. We also believe in the respect, and this is quite a very important value because without it, there won't be any order. So we believe in the respect that you respect those that are an authority, those that are entrusted for your well-being, and you respect one another in that particular way. We also believe in diversity, and this is also quite very important, that we believe we're a diverse people. And in this university, you're gonna encounter students who are coming from other countries. You're gonna find people who don't speak your language, we are now become a community. You're gonna have people who don't share your religion, who don't share how things are done. So we must begin to celebrate this diversity that we often find here. We are a public university, a university for everybody in this country and elsewhere. We also believe in social responsibility and community engagement. In other words, we believe that we can do better if our communities are also doing better. So we owe our communities a great deal of work that we should contribute to their well-being. And lastly, we believe in Ubuntu. That uh, I am because of who you are. So we must all enjoy each other's presence and be a caring people for a caring university in the way that I've just explained it. As a student of this university, you're now gonna carry the flag of this great university. Make our university proud through your contributions, especially by becoming hardworking, innovative, 
committed and been ethical in your conduct. We've got rules in this university that are meant to be respected, that I need to guide you, that I need to guide us. We've got policies and procedures. And we want to make sure that all of us work along those confines to make this university a great university. So we all carry the responsibility of making the University of Venda brand a good brand. Wherever we go, let's represent this university in the way we want to be seen and also to create a niche for ourselves. While you are here at this university, you will have an opportunity to learn new things, acquire new knowledge, develop new skills, and enhance your personal attributes. So, and that's the purpose of a university, that you have to learn new things, you have to develop yourself. And learning should only, not only happen in the classrooms or in the lecture rooms, learning also happen outside those confines. So we want to make sure that you know, our spaces become a learning spaces for you to develop yourselves. At the same time, you are going to make new friends who will become your friends for life. Make efforts to know other students who share different cultural, social, and linguistic background different from yours. In other words, move away from your confines and able to understand and to know other people and make friends and make friendship. I want to urge you that we must resist the patriarchal ideologies that views and treat women as inferior to men and perpetuate violence against women and children. As a university of Venda, we take a zero tolerance to those attitudes. And we can share with you, we have seen staff members who were found wanting when as far as abusing or perpetuating violence who were dismissed from this university. We've also seen students who also been suspended by carrying out acts of violence to others. So we must resist these patriarchal tendencies that we view women as inferior and let's treat each other in the way that we're designed by our maker. As an institution of higher learning, we must lead in this fight of eradicating gender-based violence and embrace diversity in our campus. So it should start from us. Communities must learn from us. It should not be us who are seen in the news and the social media platforms where we could hear that uh, university students and staff are engaged in the issues that perpetuate gender violence. This should be far from us. As a student of this university, you are expected at all times to live and uphold and adhere to the university values. And your team, the Director of Student Affairs, and the SRC, and the staff in that direct directorate will ensure that you are able to really receive these guidelines. Now to all first year students, my message to you is as follows. You must take responsibility of your learning. Now you cannot assource these tasks. You are the one who must learn. And our lecturing staff, you know, admin staff is here to assist you. But you must take the responsibility for your learning. You must also use this opportunity that has been presented to you in a way that you should benefit yourself intellectually. Engage your professors, engage your teachers, engage your lecturers so that you better yourselves. Also avoid drug and alcohol abuse. And this is a tendency that we've seen in most public universities in the county. That there's a high rate of drug and alcohol abuse that is happening. And these are those social problems that are going to delay you in achieving your objective. 
So avoid drugs and alcohol. You must also take a great cognizant of your safety in and around our campus. Not only here in campus, but also when you walk in the streets in our town here in Toyando and elsewhere. You must make sure that you look up to yourself. As you know, we live in a county where gender-based violence and crime has really reached a very high proportions. And there's no way we'll have a police for each and every student. So the onus is for you to ensure that you take cognizance of your safety in and around campus. We have enhanced the security on campus. We have put measures. There's a lot of uh, surveillance cameras that we have put. There's also a number of security personnel that are doing a great job to ensure that they protect you. So work with them and support them because they are people to ensure that they assist you and for you to be safe. And lastly, as I said, embrace diversity in the way that I've explained to you earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome our 2024 class, allow me to recognize our 2023-2024 ERSA leadership. I am quite impressed by the caliber of the young men and women who will be representing you in the SRC. I had an opportunity to speak and engage with the president of the SRC and the secretary general in December last year, while we were in our last council in 2023. And in my interaction with the SRC leadership, the president, the SG, demonstrated to me and others a good level of maturity in handling difficult issues and the understanding of these issues that is plaguing our post-school education and training system. So we have taken a decision and a deliberate one as management that you know, we want to make sure that we assist and partner with our SRC. So we are there to make sure that our SRC succeed and make sure that also in their leadership, we also invest in them. So we are contemplating some programs that you know, over and above you just been in SRC that you know, after your successful term, we'll put again together, either here or elsewhere, for you to be able to further your leadership. And I said to the SRC leadership that you know, regardless of those who voted for you, the mere fact that you have been voted into power, you represent all students, even those that have not voted for you. And this is my message to the leadership of the SRC. I just want also just to share with you in terms of our development around our infrastructure that some of you might have seen here. I'm happy to report to you that uh, just uh, this January, we were able to complete our facility for the student living with disabilities. I took a turn on that particular infrastructure just to see what has been developed. And I'm quite happy by what has been put there for your great use. I've also given the task to say, you know, we have to make sure that we finalize the issues of the air conditions, the telecommunications, and other small amenities that needs to be there. But I'm quite happy because of these spaces, in my view, is really meant to enhance those students that are living with disabilities. And let me say that, you know, those students that are living with disabilities, they are no less than any human being. They're just any, like on any of us. So we must take great care of them and provide spaces that is suitable for their use. Now, for those of you who might also have read through our literature, our documents, and our brochures, you have come with, to the fact that you now know that you know, our motto is to create future leaders. And by that, we say we want to educate and produce leaders who not only have a command of their core knowledge of their chosen academic disciplines, but we also want to create leaders who also possess the qualities that are needed to succeed in this socially, culturally, and technologically interconnected complex world. 
So we want to make sure that we invest in your future. And I can share with you that, you know, we've got a very great alumni, those that have already passed from this university, you know, the likes of your Minister of uh, Justice and Correctional Services, Mr. Minister Lamula, Ronald Lamula, is also an alumni. He attended this university and many, many more that I cannot even to account in this short time that I had. So we just want to make sure that you understand that we want to assist you in your leadership, in your growth. We have also taken a view that, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, our students are well taught issues around entrepreneurship because not all of you, when you graduate, you'll go and look for a job. Some of you will establish your own entities. So we want to make sure that each and every student, regardless of the discipline that you've chosen for yourself, that you be exposed to entrepreneurship. And these are the things that I know the colleagues are busy working around to ensure that we put a program that will be of good use to you. We have also identified four strategic thrusts that guides this university in this period of 2021-2025. Now 2024 is our fourth year of this strategic plan. Now we've just identified four issues that we want to focus in. The first one we said, we want to become a student-centered and engaged university. In other words, we want to make sure that you know, all our students, they must do well. We must focus it at you. The focus will be at you. We must spend monies to ensure that it change your life. So we have put systems and procedures in place to ensure that you know, we become a student-centered university. We also want to become an engaged university in terms of scholarship and research, and also a community engagement. And secondly, we said we want to become an entrepreneurial university. I've already talked about this point, that we want to, you to understand the entrepreneurial ethos before you leave this university. We have also looked in terms of our governance frameworks to make sure that we make them to be agile to support our scholarship. And lastly, we're focusing on the linkages, partnership, and internationalization. Because we believe that, you know, we are investing in this region. We are investing in this country. But we must be able to link with universities all over the world and make sure that we can create meaningful partnerships that will benefit our university and its staff and students. As I'm about to conclude, I want to express my appreciation to the academic division that is led by the registrar and his team. I also want to thank our SRC that I'm aware they are playing a very good role in ensuring that you know, our 2024 admission and registration processes become successful. And you might have seen that you know, uh, we, we want to ensure that you know, we make sure system that, our system that you know, become online investing and then we want to make sure that that system works well for us. Program Director, allow me once again to extend a word of welcome to our new students who are now part of this University of Venda community. And as I'm about to sit down, it is an honor for me and privilege for me to declare the University of Venda 2024 academic year officially open. I thank you.
to the principal, members of the executive committee, uh, DVC Teaching and Learning, DVC Research and Innovation, our registrar in absentia, our CFO, members of the SMC, lecturing staff, support and non-academic staff members, our student leadership, and our esteemed guests, our students. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, that sounds a bit like it. This is a very sp special day for us as um, the academic division of the university and as the university. This is the day wherein we share with you uh, and present our best performing students on whom we're very proud. So these Vice Chancellor's Excellence Awards initiative is actually meant to recognize and celebrate our top achievers hard work throughout the academic journey in various levels of study. As you'll see, we'll have top, top achievers from the first level, second, up to the third level. So these are the people who actually embody our slogan, which says we are creating future leaders. So we are very proud of them because they are definitely embodying that, that one. And because they are through their accomplishment, we are sure that actually the university is going to grow in, its, um, in size and also in its recognition that it will be a well-known university, both nationally, nationally and internationally. That means that our students will be able to market this university and thus increase also uh, the corporate identity of our university, which is our 11th specific, specific uh, out, uh, objective of our strategic objectives. So it is evident that these students set a very high bar in their thirst for knowledge. And this indicates that the university produces students who continue to inspire their peers with outstanding performance in and outside the classroom. We are delighted that these students will contribute to the development of our communities through their new ideas and elevation in the exemplary leadership etiquette. So these best performing students for the academic year 2023 level one, two, and three, they are from all the faculties of the university. So it means it is possible to be the best, it's possible to achieve excellence in all the faculties. So that is the faculty of um, Health Sciences, Faculty of Humanities, Social Sciences and Education, Faculty of Management, Commerce and Law, as well as the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Ag Agriculture. So we applaud these recipients of the Vice Chancellor's Awards, and it is, it is critical to note that behind the success story, there lies the power of resilience, working through hardships and boundaries in the midst of socioeconomic challenges that our country is facing. Kudos to everyone, we are very proud of you. So these are the students who have actually actualized uh, the common saying that we are familiar with, that excellence is not an act, but a habit. And this quotation is often um, attributed to the philosopher Aristotle, but then um, academics and researchers agree that it is, was actually Will Durant who came up with this as he was trying to unpack uh, Aristotle's contribution to philosophy. So then we also want to equally recognize the support uh, that our students receive from their parents, guardians, sponsors for ensuring that they remain focused throughout their academic journey. And most importantly, we also thank, thank the academic staff, technical staff, heads of department, executive deans and their support staff for ensuring that the environment is conducive to teaching and learning activities. Now, who are these students who are going to receive these awards? These are the students who excelled in their assessment and in their performance. They got an average of 75%. Okay? Average, not just one subject, but an average. It means that if the qualification needs you to take four modules, the average mark thereof is 75 and above. If it needs you to take 11, still the average thereof is 75 and above. 
and they obtained this with the very first sitting of the examination. So it means that these are not the marks from a special exam, from aggregated or any other kind of exam, but the first examination that you set for. And as, we, uh, as the, the, the quotation goes, the, it's not an act but a habit. So it means it's consistent, it's, uh, it's also perpetual. Okay, so it, because it's not just in one subject. Obviously, if you're going to get 80 in one subject and you get 60 and 55, in the, definitely you're not going to make it into this category. So it means you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent. So these are our students who are going to get these awards. And as I've said, in all the faculties and in all the levels. So we'll have winners in the, in the first level, winners in the second level, as well as winners in the third level. And we also have our overall winner. We also have our overall winner. So these winners will be receiving their certificates. And the first position, definitely also a little bit of some nice cash incentive. Okay. So with that said, I thank you and I thank the principal, then the VC. The Vice Chancellor and the Principal of the University, Dr. Ntambe, uh, Professor Ntambelini, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Research and Postgraduate Studies, Professor Feza, other members of EMC, as well as the members of Executive uh, SMC, good morning. Mine is very easy. So. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to request you to present faculty awards to the candidates that I shall present to you. By virtue of authority entrusted to me, I present the faculty awards. We are going to start with the Faculty of Management, Commerce and Law, um, that is level one, level one. Our third position goes to Miss Asperi. She is in BCom in business and information systems, the number of subjects that she's busy with or that she needs to do are 11. Thank you. Our second winner, also from the same qualification, BCom in Accounting Sciences, it's Ms. M.U. Muta. She's not here. Okay, the faculty manager to receive on her behalf. The dean. Okay. And our winner in this category, Mrs. A. A. Patel. Same.
Then we move on to the second level. Then our um, third performer here, Miss A. Mudau, who's also in BCom in Accounting Sciences. The next one, our second one, is Mr. G.T. Shabangu. Mr. G.T. Shabangu. He is doing BCom in economics. BCom in economics. <laughs> and our winner in the second category, I mean in um, level two, it's Mrs. F.F. Balejwala. Right, we move on, move on to the third level. Third level, unfortunately, we don't have number three. We only have number two and number one. And our number two is Miss A. Sibara, who is in the Bachelor of Flaws. He's doing level, it's Mr. T.K. Tico. <laughs> and both are winners in uh, level three are doing Bachelor of Laws. And they are taking 12 modules. So you can see it's possible, it's doable. Right, then we move on to the Faculty of Science, Engineering, and Ag Agriculture level one, the best performance there. Right, our third position goes to Mr. E.T. Tiwana, who is doing Who is doing BSc Computer Sciences and Mathematics? And is taking 15 subjects. Our second <laughs> uh, position two goes on to uh, Mr. T. M. Matebula. Who is in? Uh, who is doing BSc in biochemistry and biology, with 13 modules? <laughs> He's not here. Okay. Then our winner, our winner, Mr. T. K. Nematit, is doing. Is doing BSc in hydrology and water resources yeah. with 
16 modules. Then level two, moving on to level two, our third winner, Miss S.A. Fundama. She's doing BSc in Maths and, st and Statistics. She's carrying 13 modules. Our position two goes to Mr. M.M.A. Patel who is doing BSc Computer Sciences and Mathematics. <laughs> and carrying 13 modules. Right, our winner in this category is Mr. D.D. Mamabulo. is doing ESC in biochem and micro, micro, carrying 10 modules. Thank you. Right, then. Lastly, our level three, our position three in level three, Miss Anne Matagu. <laughs> she is doing BS in hydrology and water resources, and she is carrying eight modules. Our second winner is Ms. P. Tibani, who is doing BSc in Mining and Environmental Geology with 15 modules. category is Ms. T.C. Gatawa. <laughs> BSc in Hydrology and Water Resources, carrying eight modules. Yeah. <laughs> then we move on to the Faculty of Health Sciences. Level one, our best performers. Our position three goes to Mr. L. Mapang Mapanga. 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 <laughs> Bachelor of Nursing, who's carrying 10 modules. It seems Mr. Mapanga is not here. Then our second winner, uh, Michelle, Miss Michelle Malele, Bachelor of Nursing. Oh, she's here. <laughs> she's carrying 10 modules. was our third winner. I didn't see you, no, so we moved on. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Mapanga is also doing Bachelor of Nursing. He's carrying 10 modules. Right. Our winner 
And this level one best performers, it's Mr. MJ Magoro, who is doing who is doing BSc in Recreation and Leisure Studies, carrying seven modules. Thank you. And then we move on to level two. And our third position goes to Miss Anne Patlane. Miss Anne Patlane, who is doing BSc in nutrition. She's carrying six modules. Our second position goes to Miss Envy May, who is in BSc, BSc in Sports and Exercise Science. She is also carrying six modules. We want to see your face. Yes, the cap. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Then our winner. In this category, Ms. L. Mlovu, Bachelor of Nursing. She's carrying seven modules. Thank you. Our level three. The third winner is Ms. R. R. Radzilani, BSc in Sports and Exercise Sciences. She's carrying six majors. Second place goes to Ms. TMN Tesla, who is in BSc in Biokinet Biokinetics. With six modules. <laughs> Then our winner in this category Our winner in this category is Miss A. Chisikane, BSc in Recreation and Leisure Studies with seven modules. Then we go on to, on to the Faculty of Humanities, Social Sciences, and Education, Level 1 winners. Our third position goes to Ms. W. E. Mluli, who is um, doing Bachelor of Theology. She's carrying eight modules. Then the second position goes to Ms. T.P. Maepa. Who is doing Bachelor of Education in Foundation Phase. And she's carrying 15 modules.
and our winner in this category, we have Mr. M. L. Munyepao, who is doing Bachelor of Theology. with eight modules. Then our second level best perform performing position three goes to Mr. M.P. Makubele, who is um, doing Bachelor of Social Work with 17 modules. And position two goes to Mr. K. Garira, who's also doing Bachelor of uh, Social Work. Uh, position two, which like is not here. Okay. Our winner in this category is Mr. O. E. Munjedzi. <laughs> who is doing BA in Media Studies with eight modules. Then our level three best performing students for 2023. Position three goes to Miss V. Mubango. <laughs> Doing Bachelor of Social Work with 12 modules. Position two goes to Miss M. D. Rampiapedi, <laughs> BA in Language Practice, with ten modules. Winner in this category is Ms. K. L. Mashau, who is in BA in language practice. Just to, uh, it took us to the end of the faculties. Now we go on to our overall winner. This is the winner of the winners. Yes. Our best overall student in all faculties. Here we have Mr. D.D. Mamabulo. in biochemistry and microbiology and is doing 10 modules and the average mark the average mark 85.30 so this is the winner of our winners as we've already said the first position winners also get a cash incentive.
of course, depending on the level. Thank you. And all winners are requested to remain for a group photo after this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Whilst the uh, Univen Choir is getting ready to render an item, I'd like to invite uh, all the uh, winners to come to the fore to take uh, pictures with the VC and members of the executive management. Univen Choir can go ahead. All the winners, please come to the fore for a group picture. Please come to the fore. <laughs>
Thank mm-hmm. you.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are up against load shedding. So this has been a wonderful morning. I don't know for you. I mean, I'm having a party there, and I'm out of control. Um, thank you so much, choir, to stimulate us. But I would like first to thank our vice chancellor for this morning address. I don't know if you were listening because I was listening attentively and with a purpose. I am hoping all of us were doing such. Uh, Vice Chancellor, it is amazing to have a leader who sees and observe and then recognize and celebrate the fruits. Some leaders just observe and don't see, and therefore you never see the recognition of the work. For these young people today, we were talking with the CFO about the beauty and the brains that are combined here. And we were talking about potential wives and husbands. We go far, you know, and we were also talking about the future leaders in different spaces. We were listening at the number of modules they are doing, and I was talking to the CFO about the early childhood person, and I was like, the education person is doing too much. That's the most difficult program to do because it's about the brains and how they network of the child and how you nurture, and how do you add to the intuition. So I'm very proud of you. And we were also looking at these handsome boys not wanting to smile because they know when they show their teeth with all go crazy. I think they were in control. But you can see they control everything we see. That is why they are here today and thank you for motivating them. Thank you for encouraging them, and thank you for awarding them. What I would like us to take with, our VC was talking about integrity, respect, and embracing one another. In a nutshell, I can say he was saying, there is nothing we can achieve without loving one another. Thank you, VC, for making us aware of that. Because if we don't love one another, you can have the highest education. It's useless. Whose lives are you going to change? You have to love your neighbor. You have to love others. You need to work hard to make sure you contribute to your society. Hence, I was shouting at them because I was seeing possibilities. And please keep it up next year. I want to see you here in different levels. Because you can and you have shown us. Our VC spoke about diversity and, and we have to embrace it because it is who we are. It's such a, a tough luck for us South Africans because we don't go and check our DNA. As much as people, when they talk about me, they talk about Lomkosa. They have no clue. I'm not a pure cost. I'm a mix, and I won't tell because you will discriminate me even more. <laughs> that is what is going on in this country. We are not pure what we claim to be. Because when South Africa was going through different colonizations, there were too much mingling and rapes that were happening from different cultures to our mothers and grandmothers. So you can say you are not related to me, you will be shocked. When I go to Tabane Mall, I see myself in some girls, and I smile and I'm like, hmm. I can see my genes. So 
We need to elevate ourselves into recognizing and accepting that so that the mission of this university on diversity is increased. Thank you, VC. Deputy Vice Chancellor Teaching and Learning, Prof. Likalakala, thank you for allowing us to have this uh, under the strong executive deans you have. This would never happen. I was so happy when Prof. You stood up and embraced your student. This won't happen if we don't have dedicated lecturers and professors in this university who make sure that this talent never dies, but it blooms. And I said on our opening day, there is no sky that is the limit. We go beyond the sky. I think our son there showed us that you go beyond. 75% is supposed to be average, and he says, nah, not for me. I'm going beyond 75%. So thank you, DVC for granting us that opportunity. To the recipients, I'll come back to my colleagues. This is the day of happiness. But when I look at your faces, you're not happy. I know because you know why? You always put pressure on yourselves. You want more, I know that. That's why you are smiling a little bit because you are saying I need to do more. I need to expand myself more. I understand that, but today is for us to really smile and, 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 and also do that thing of pinching yourself because no one else will see me. Because I've made it and I can and I will and I will continue. So I am encouraging you to continue working hard to, make, to continue making yourselves proud. This is about you. It's not about me. It's about, not about anyone else. It's about you. Do you know what you've just done? You have made the University of Venda a university of excellency. Because of your excellent work. And therefore, we can't go down. We are going to go up because, remember, you are our ambassador. So today, excellency is appreciated because of you. And go and do more. And let us shine out there. I know you are marketable. That's what entrepreneurship is about, students. To be marketable, to be able to innovate yourself, so that everyone wants to work with you. That's part of entrepreneurship. So you are proving to us that as this university, our mission and values, you are living them. So thank you very much and keep shining. <clears throat> to the organizers of event, Mr. Makatan, I'd like to apologize to you. We were supposed to finish here at 10 so that there are no glitches of electricity and all that. But we were late. But amazingly enough, you managed to make sure that we are not disappointed. So please accept our apology. The organizers of this event, this is huge and innovative. I'm very proud of Univen staff members who think out of the box. We are in this region. This is a very hot region. If we do not become innovative about it and how we handle our things, then we won't succeed. But today, I see your innovation, and I'm so appreciative of it. And I want to thank you, and I want you to keep it up. To the executive deans, we 100 recipients in 2025. Because we have grown, there is not a single part of our bodies that hasn't grown for these past three years. So now, I am imagining, as you know, I have all my imagination, some things growing in my necks and all that. So I am expecting hundreds of these young people 
coming from your faculties, and I know you can because you've shown us. Again, to the university choir and to the university choir mistress, I kind of like that. When I arrived, it was a choir master. Now it's a choir mistress. You know, talent is very important for us Africans. We dance, we sing, we act, we do poet. But where else can we do that better than in a university? Where it is influenced by high philosophical work and it is a healing thing. Nothing else heals like dancing and singing. Even if you were crying, even if you were sad, you just forget. Thank you so much for always making it possible for us to celebrate in a proper manner as Africans and never stop. And I heard somebody saying, we need more of you here in this choir. We need this choir to be bigger. So I am inviting the first years that are here that we have this amazing choir with a beautiful red dress and you do your makeup and you look so gorgeous. Do you see them? And I'm inviting you to come and join. Look at how handsome our boys are. Just <laughs> check them. So if you join them, you will enjoy, but you'll feel good. What I like about it, it teaches you discipline. There's a lot of discipline that goes there. You see, when they move, they move together the same way, a lot of practice, a lot of being submissive to learn more. So thank you, choir mistress. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Dr. Zak. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Feza, for the vote of thanks. Uh, to our first time entering students, the principal at the investor vendor or at the university level, it's called vice chancellor and principal. Did you see the investor vendor, vice chancellor and principal? Did you? Oh, no. <laughs> VC, could you please rise so that. Uh, the audience could see you. <laughs> okay, that's uh, the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Venda, Professor Bernard Ntambeleni. And he has instructed me to announce that uh, the Executive Committee of uh, Senate at its special meeting this morning, took a decision that we should have the official opening of the 2024 academic year to mark the commencement of uh, 2020 academic year. But uh, the lectures will only commence on Monday, the 12th of Jan February, 2024. So this implies that uh, all those who are yet to finalize their registration will go ahead with uh, registration processes, but we are also aware that in the Faculty of Health Sciences, they have already started with their lectures. So this is the instruction that I've been given to share with you about the commencement of lectures for 2024 academic year. So this brings us to the end of our event, and I would like to request that uh, when the choir leads us in the singing of the national anthem, we should all rise, and all males should remove their caps or heads. And after dissolution of this congregation by the vice chancellor and principal, we should remain standing until such time the procession has left this venue. Thank you so much.
by virtue of authority entrusted to me, I dissolve this congregation of the University of Venda. Oh, my God. 